Welcome to Start This Easy. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how you can start the provision store business in seven easy steps. And as usual, we're going to be using our website startbiz.com as our background and also reference for this amazing business idea. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Here at startbizeasy.com. So like I said, we're going to be talking about how you can start the profitable provision store business you need to understand that provision store business are also known as grocery stores or convenient stores they are actually retail establishment or retail stores that sells from food items to household items even down to pharmaceutical items uh, and also you need to understand that if you're looking for a business that actually pays daily uh, brings in daily profit or daily income then provision store business is something that you should consider is a business that is very is very easy to maintain very easy to manage and very easy to succeed if you just know what you are doing you are definitely going to get success success is guaranteed that's what i'm saying so um number one on the list of the first step is to decide on your specialty what kind of items are you going to be selling are you going to be selling perishable items are you going to be selling non-perishable items or are you going to be selling mix of it so you need to understand what uh rather know the specialty of items that you are going to be selling and also there are factors that actually determine if you are going to be selling perishable items not perishable items and number one on that list is your target market what is the demand or the prevalent demand between your target markets if you notice your, your target markets are full of working class people they know that those guys don't actually have the time of going through um, the process of getting raw food raw items then cooking them from the process of grinding and all that then cooking them so they prefer to go for um me that i've already prepared or um halfway prepared so you want to consider if they're working class people for instance your target market then you need to go for perishable items more than the perishable items or just go totally for the perishable items but if you're your uh, target markets are less of the working class uh that's what i mean working class i mean the eight to five kind of working class people so if you know your environment are less of those kind of class those kind of um, target markets then you can go for perishable items but if you're confused or you can't really know you can't tell because there's some area whereby you can't just tell if these target market are actually working class people or they are non-working class people so you can just go for a mix of boots but make sure when you're going for a mix of boots don't worry we are going to be revealing to you so that you know how to go about it so that you don't end up overstocking your items and understocking some of the items all right so you uh, you need to determine your specialty which i just said are you going to go for the perishable or the non-perishable all right number two is sufficient capital you need capital to start this business if one is thriving provision store or a provision store that has more chance or higher chances of survival and turning out to be successful then you need a capital a large sum of capital we're talking about a minimum of 500,000 naira to start this business yes you can start this business with as little as 100,000 you can start this business with as little as um, 50,000 but if you want to start a striving small provision store within your residential area uh, you need a minimum of 500,000 naira that's a striving if you have the desire to succeed once to get more profit instantly as you are just kicking off, you are getting more profit, then you're talking about minimum of 500,000. But if you're thinking about going into um, the provision of this business, that's a provision store business, on a bit more to accommodate more space. That's, I mean, I don't want to use the word larger provision store, but I think that's really what I can use. So if you are going into starting a larger provision store, then you need a minimum of 2.5 million euro to start this business. And you are ready to go to start a very convenient, thriving, large provision store within your residential areas whereby you can accommodate diverse range of items. Now, even they, the pillars, the people within the residential area, they know that when they come to your spot, when they come to your um, provision store, they must get the items they are looking for. So, you, you have to consider um, then you, your capital should be nothing less than 2.5 million. Uh, Nera to start this business and you're going to be spending this capital on several items such as um, The rent the furnitures you have to be spending them part of it on utilities You spend part of it on inventory you spend part of it on license um, Permits marketing and also miscellaneous 
expenses those are mainly the items that you're going to be spending your items on and also you're going to be spending your items i think i didn't write it here after this video i'm going to update it on your stock your inventories yeah i have them here oh sorry i have it here inventory that's the most important in fact your capital um 70 percent or 80 percent of your capital should be spent around your inventory while the remaining should be shared within the rest expenses all right um okay i also sp um, spoke on this article on um, i also write that you can source your capital from different um, um external sources from family and friends from banks from crowdfunding governments and all that so number two is to select a prime location location is key to this provision business you need a very strategic location to come up with to start your provision business so you don't struggle for for visibility and also accessibility so there are several factors that you want to consider when you're when you're trying to pick out the best location within that residential area that you want to start the production store we have um factors such as high food traffic yes that's the most important you need to consider really yeah, because in a residential area that part of residential area that actually uh, there, there are more high food traffic there than other parts of that same residential area so you need to target those areas that have um i food traffic and i think um to spot those um those location one factor is those t junction where there are four junction they are mostly high traffic there or bus stops that are always high traffic within those two um items i just talked about there are mostly high food traffic there within those two elements i just or rather two factors i just talked about there the bus stop or a spot whereby four junction meets is a good spot to also consider for starting your provision store business you also need to consider the next factor of um, residential neighborhoods the neighborhood within the way you need to consider the residential area you don't just set up your provision store in any residential neighborhood so you need to consider the neighborhood are they welcoming people um are they people that easily can shop because there are some residential um, neighborhood with the whole standard of living there you know that setting up a large provision store here yeah, will not strive will not strive easily so you need to consider your residential neighborhood when setting up your provision store business and it could even be a factor to even tell me if you're going to set up a large provision store or a small provision store within that neighborhood also you need to consider commercial center commercial spots within residential areas are nice spot to set up a provision store for instance, where in the residential area, you discover that some spots whereby there are so many businesses. I'm not talking about your competitors. Um, there are so many businesses. Maybe someone is doing boutique, someone is doing barbing, someone is doing um, shoe making and all that. So it just is. They seem to be within a cycle, um, a cycle. So you can just come up with your own provision store business within that same circle and definitely you're going to be making sales because since that is already a commercial spot within that residential neighborhood people always go there so it means that you are likely to get new customers like to get repeated sales from that same um, location also you also need to consider proximity to market you also need to consider near schools especially if your items are not perishable then you should consider selling your items near schools and also accessibility very very important all right step four is to set up your shop now you go to capital now you go to location you need to set up your shop your shop needs to be appealing and also it should be enticing enough for consum after, um, consumers to want to explore to want to go around and also very easy for them to identify where their item is and in setting up your shop there are very there are several factors or rather several items that must be put in place several equipment or items and you want to call it that must be put in place we have the chef you need a well arranged chef well arranged and labor chef where people can easily spot what they are looking for if one particular chef is going to be known for perishable items and is one particular kind of perishable items or two kind of perishable items that you want to be selling other items just make sure you spare them out if one item is going to be for um cream and all that cosmetic aspect if you choose to include that in your in your provision store then make sure on that shelf it is well spread out for you for consumers and customers to easily locate their items also you need to consider the refrigerator unit which is very very important if you want to start a provision store business you also have the display racks i'm talking about equipment that you need to set up your store in a very appealing 
in a very appealing manner. We have the display rack, we have the adequate spacing. You need to give spacing. Don't don't just chop like what like I went to one supermarket um I think a few days ago and within a supermarket though it's, it's a nice supermarket, they have several items, but what they like they were just spacing. The spacing they didn't have enough space. So I in my mind I was just I was just like if they could just create more space so that people can actually pass um, people can actually feel and move around and all that it will be a, an attribute though the business is already successful is a very busy place uh, but with that spacing that would be an additional attribute to their sources so you need to consider spacing which is very very important and also check out area where people come in should not be where people are going out in your provision store especially if you are running a large provision store except maybe your provision store is going to be small then you can just be doing one in one entry well, one way in, one way out. Like, but if it's going to be on the large provision store, it means it's going to be one way in and another way out. Um, we also have branding, which is also an important element. That uh, signage, that uh, signboard, an important element to set up your shop because people need to know what we your provision store be named as. It's not going to be an unnamed business, so it need to have it need to has a name. And probably maybe inside the shop, you can just put the name within the wall so that as people go through they can easily see, see the name or put something like a logo for people to easily recall and remember um, anytime they are not shopping and they want to send someone to go get some items from your provision store and also we have to talk about safety and accessibility which is very important when you're setting up your provision store all right number five is to fulfill legal requirements you need to meet the legal requirements before setting up your provision store and since you're setting up a provision store and it's a uh, provision store are actually retail establishment so it's very easy very easy to meet up the legal requirement you just have two basic legal requirements first is the business registration and second is the tax identification number is very very easy and if you want to know how you can register your business how you can get a tax um tax identification number then you can just come to start this easy dot com come to start this easy dot com click on this icon this search icon there tap in what you're looking for if it's business registration you have to put business registration and it will take you among the result there the number one item you will see there is going to be how you can register your business so you just have a glimpse um, knowledge on how this whole thing works so that even if you decide not to register the business yourself you also need you just um because you i'm um, sorry even if you decide not to register your business yourself you already have that knowledge on how it works so when they're explaining it to you are you going for business name are you going for limited and all that it will be very easy for you to decide rather than showing some sign because when you start showing sign of illiteracy in this aspect uh you are definitely going to be paying more than what you should be paying so you need to make sure that you are knowledgeable even even if you're not going to register your business yourself just make sure you read that article and you can register your business uh, or you can come to um, the provision store business this just click on it it will take you straight up to the page or if you click on this tax identification number it will also take you to how you can register your tax identification um, number all right number six is to stock your provision store this is where most provision store owners make a very big mistake and if you make a mistake here it's definitely going to affect your the success of your provision store is definitely going to affect the success of your provision store so you want to make sure that you're stocking the right items you're stocking the the quality items or let me just um give give the pick let me take the pick from the article so that i won't just make everything confusing to you so when you're stocking your items you need to consider factors such as the product selection you need to consider products actually meet your target market so you need to consider product selection very important you need to consider the product the quality of the product the quantity of what you are buying make sure you are having you are buying on a balanced quantity you are not overstocking and you are not understocking and those items are actually have more demand within your target market you should focus more on buying those items and those one with less demand you should focus less on buying those items you also need to consider variety of products you don't just go for one particular product even if you are buying tin tomatoes for instance make sure that the tin tomatoes are from different companies because different people with different tastes so you want to make sure that you are able to satisfy a commensurate amount of um, consumers within that tin tomatoes market or let me just say within that tin tomatoes 
um, products. And also, you need to also, also consider seasonal consideration. You want, to consider, you want to take advantage of seasonal trends. So you want to make sure that during the seasonal trend, especially Christmas, there are so many items that sell during seasonal trend or during the Christmas um, trend. So you want to make sure you take advantage of these seasonal trends so that you take advantage of the demand because there is always a demand for this product during those seasonal trends and you make more profit easily. So um, display and organization, uh, organization rather. So you want to make sure that your, your stock, they are well displayed and well organized within your provision store business. So in case you're considering, okay, how am I going to shop? How am I going to source my provision store? How am I going to suck, um, source this um, provision store? How am I going to purchase my stock? There are several ways you can actually purchase your stock on in your provision store. We have the OC market. You can also, you can always contact the OC market. We have the distributors and suppliers. We have manufacturers. I know within the OC, I just put Lagos, Kano, and each other. But literally, there are always wholesalers in every state. So you just have to locate the wholesaler within your state. And most main uh, wholesalers are actually, they actually operate within the larger market. So just locate the larger market within your state or within your city and you'll be able to get a good um, wholesaler or a distributor, the registered distributor there and to get your product. Remember when you're getting your product, get quality and not just a bad quantity. Make sure you get quality and also as you're getting the quality, <laughs> make sure you're getting the right quantity for each of the items. And also you want to make sure um, the wholesaler or the distributors you are getting your items from, they are legit, they, they are well known or they, are, they have a reputation for selling original product because the only difference between an original product and the fake product is actually the content inside. So you don't want to target market or, cons or your consumers buying product and complaining that your product is actually different from the normal product. So you don't want that kind of bad name. It will be very difficult for you to survive or to strive in such an image um, if you are going to be successful in this um, business, in the provision store business. You want to make sure that you get your product from the right place. So you can also source your product from online marketplaces, especially those seasonal items. Online marketplaces are always the nicest place to get those items. You also need to consider the trade association and cooperative. It's a nice place to get um, items where traders they come together, gather money together, buy the products in bulk directly most, because most times they buy directly from the manufacturers. Oh, I didn't even talk about the manufacturers. So they buy directly from the manufacturers and they share it among themselves. So trade association, cooperative are also a nice place to get your products. And also um, local suppliers and farmers, if they're going to be selling um, farm produce, then you should contact farmers and um, get their items. Also, also um, trade shows and exhibitions also a nice place for you to source your products. And like I said, when you're stocking your products, you need to be very careful because the sources of the business will determine on these parts, on these steps, on this step on your provision store business, which is the stocking business. So there are common mistakes that people make in this um, stocking, there are common mistakes that people make that you don't want to make. And I advise you not to make it because if you make it, it will be difficult for you to strive in this business. And number one on the list is overstocking. If you are overstocking, especially items that have less demand. So if you are overstocking those items, you end up they end up taking space and they end up not even being purchased and at the end of the day they expire and you run out of loss and you just yeah and if you keep doing that you just find out that one day you don't have the money to keep on your business or to keep running your business and as such you go into bankruptcy so you don't really want that and i don't want that for you so you also need to consider understocking you don't want to make the mistake of understocking especially those items with high demand you want to make sure you stock them well so that when before the item finishes you have a replacement to always replace those high demanding items also you need to have poor product selection you need to prevent yourself from making this mistake i mean poor product selection don't make this mistake whereby you go to the market to stock your product based on your preferences you don't want to make that mistake you always stock your product based on customers preferences not your preferences so make sure you get that straight please make sure you get that straight don't make don't go and stock your product based on what you want based on your like oh i like fanta so much so for that reason for that reason you are going to get more fanta and less of 
cook. So you want to make sure that you're sourcing your products on the demand of your target market. You also have, uh, don't make the mistake of ignoring seasonal trend. Like I said before, there are high demanding items and you don't want to meet, you don't want to miss such an opportunity to make easy cook cash for yourself. Also, don't make the mistake of um, buying just one particular type of item. So make sure you have varieties of items. Um, the next is quality control. Make sure you have a good quality control. Don't make that mistake of buying cheap uh, cheap products or less quality products because they are cheap. So make sure that you have quality products. It's better that you have quality products that are expensive than cheap products that are less, that have bad qualities. Please make sure that you go for quality. And also, um, don't make the mistake of not negotiating with your suppliers. Make sure you always negotiate with your suppliers, negotiate with the wholesaler. Even if the price are fixed, you can have your way to negotiate with the manufacturer, with the supplier, distributors, in a way that you are able to come out to have a discount within what you are buying for. Maybe a transportation discount, maybe a bulk discount. So make sure you always negotiate with your suppliers. And also, very important, you need to have an efficient inventory management. Don't make the mistake of, of paying less attention to this aspect, please. You want to make sure you have an efficient money inventory, inventory management whereby you can easily monitor your items to know which one is running out of stock, which one is actually um, actually overstocked because that one is also very important because inventory management is going to guide you on that aspect on which item is actually overstocked, which item needs to be stocked because with inventory management system, you are able to track the demand. You are able to know the demand, uh, which item is moving recently, which items is bringing more cash recently. So you want to make sure you take advantage of inventory management to always track your stocking so that you don't run out of stock, you don't understock, and you don't overstock at the same time. Also, don't ignore the customer's feedback. Please don't ignore customer's feedback. You also need to monitor market trends. I think I've spoken about that when I was talking about the seasonal. Um, trend and also the last mistake which is number 11 this mistake is very important copy and paste please when you want to start a provision store business because i've seen many provision store business owners make this mistake they come into the locality go to their competitors and copy exactly what their competitors are they are selling that is a very very bad strategy please don't do that because when you do that the customers they are already friend or they are already conversant with that um, competitor that you're copying from because the person has actually, has actually been there before you came in so they will not feel the need of actually coming to buy from you because they feel that what you have is what they can actually get or what they have been assessing from that same person so you want to make sure that your items are a bit different from your competitors maybe if your competitors are more on the perishable items you can do a mix of perishable and non-perishable or even increase your non-perishable more than your perishable so you want to make sure that you have this mix that actually differentiates you from your competitors and it is very easy for your for um for the consumers to actually differentiate you from others we have items that are common within a provision store we have the food items we are talking about the rice pasta the flour the beans and all that we have beverages we have dairy products we have snacks we have um, fresh produce, we have bakery items, we have frozen foods like frozen vegetables, frozen fruits, frozen meat and seafoods. We have ice cream, frozen desserts. So all those items are very common within the provision store. We also have the household essentials like the toilet paper, the cleaning products. Uh, we have canned food, we have um, health and wellness. If you choose to include this in your um, provision store items, you can also consider them. We also have the baby care products. You have the pet supply so all these are common items that you can find in a provision store uh, number seven which is the last step in starting a provision store business is building a strong brand you want to build a strong brand in matter of fact if you can follow the six steps that i've mentioned so far carefully then you're, you've already have like 70 percent success mark in building a strong brand for yourself because first of all you have the good stock the good amount of stock First of all, you have different varieties. Then you have um, you have uh, what's there again? You have the your your store is already appealing, which is a good sign of good brand. You also have um, seasonal trends items there for people to assess. You also have 
it, there are so many things I've talked about, so I don't want to be recording them to make the video long. So if you can just have those items, those steps that I've mentioned before now, then you're already halfway or more than halfway gone in having a strong brand in the provision store business. So in order to also sell your brand, you also, you also need to consider marketing, of course, because nobody will just sit and know your business. So it's possible to start, set up this kind of business provision store and you start getting customers gradually. But if you want to get the customers in one rush, only in a rush, then you should also try to... Um, just try to spend a little bit on the market. I know more provision store owners we we feel this step is not necessary, but I think it's necessary. You can just come up with posters, just put them around the neighborhood, um, pointing them to the new provision store owner in town where they can get all their items. So you also need to consider those type, um, that kind of marketing strategy. And also I gave some other few steps within the article. All right, um, and I also went for that to talk about business plan yeah business plan is very important for provision store business and also talk about uh, challenges of provision store business um with all these seven steps then you are good to go in starting a provision store business so if you have any question contribution just leave them in the comment section below and if you want to read this article because i advise you to go through the article but what i just said now just preamble or peripherals of everything on everything that has to do with starting a provision store business so if you want to no more starting a provision store business then i recommend you come to um click the link because the link of this article is in the description below or it's going to be on the comments it's going to pin in the comment section below so you just go there click on the link and it will take you straight up to the article on how you can start a provision store business so that's all for now until next time see you